here in the beautiful city of Atlanta, Russ Chandler Stadium. Glad you can join us. Day two of the 2023 Southwestern Athletic Conference Baseball Tournament. Two teams will be eliminated today, and of the four games today, three rivalry games should be fun here on day number two. As you see, the Prairie View A&M Panthers in our first rivalry game will take on Texas Southern University for the eighth time this season. The eighth meeting between these two teams, Prairie View and Texas Southern. The winner will advance, the loser goes home. Good morning, everyone. I'm Charles Edmond, our producer, James Crenshaw. Charles Bishop on the field. We'll check with him in a moment. The Hall of Famer, Roger Kador. Coach Kador, here we go, day two. Someone's gonna move on. Someone's gonna get eliminated here in the first couple of games. First up, Prairie View and Texas Southern for the eighth time this season. Coming out of the loser's bracket, give us the mindset here for these two teams. Someone's gonna move on and someone's going home. Well. You, I try to go back to yesterday. What I saw, Prairie View coach had a very uh, long meeting with his team after the game, lasted over an hour or something. And today, Mike Robinson is upbeat. He said that what we're going to do is that we've got a picture we're sending out here. We're going to have one in the bullpen ready to go. All men on board ready to play. And he feels that Prairie View will be coming at him with all they have to offer. Well, we are underway. The lefty Cade Fatino, one and two during the season. Seven starts during the year with a 4.34 earned run average. And he'll take on Garrison Weiss, the right fielder. We're underway here from Atlanta. Full slate of games, three rivalry games. This game, FAMU, Alabama State. Later, Centoria Black will have Southern and Grambling, both of those teams one yesterday should be a fun day too here's a shot up the middle base hit left center field weiss gets it going for the panthers good at bat speaking of at bats charles bishop on the field charles bishop you had a chance to talk with previews head coach antoine regan's the at-bats were key yesterday. Yes, the at-bats were very key yesterday, and that's something Coach Riggins really went over his players with in the bad cages this morning in terms of pitch recognition and having good at-bats. He felt like they were on their front foot a little bit too much yesterday, so he's really looking for them to make some much, much better uh, plate appearances today. And, of course, for the Panthers, in a blink of an eye, they were down 4 nothing and never could really get it going against Bama State as the Panthers lost 11 to one, but that was yesterday. You have a new lease on life today. Let's see what the Panthers do. Let's see what Texas Southern does with the lead off on and a bunt attempt, a high pitch, and try to bunt at it and missed it is Zachary Trevino. Hit 258 during the regular season with 26 runs batted in. Pressure coach Kador, one of these teams is going home after this one. You think it'll be tense early with the season on the line? Well, you know, it's a rivalry game. Schools are 45, 50 miles apart from each other. Many of the players probably played together in high school at JC. So you're looking at, I mean, you know, a natural rivalry situation. And I tell you what, nobody's gonna give in early. Prairie View led off with a single, then they try to sacrifice Buck, the runner to second. I just think it'll be some action here. There's a curve as high, and the Prairie View players contending it was a balk. The thing I don't like from watching this umpire right off the bat, he's not going to be a, a strike call umpire. You know, the, you know, I don't like those kind of guys when they have a small strike zone in tournament play. Brian Clark, the home plate umpire, foul off to the left side. Randall Montgomery, the first base umpire. Patrick Graham at second and Kevin Bradley at third. Just underway, full slate of games here 68 degrees pleasant day high in the mid to upper 70s humidity is tolerable good day too for baseball here in atlanta just underway leadoff single by weiss the lefty fatino brings it home runner going there's a fly ball in the center field it, it gotta get oh, back it could touch. be a double play anyway. and it is a double play eight to three as Weiss couldn't get back to first, he was doubled up we on the strong throw by Cromer. We want to replay that 
we want to be able to show why he was out no matter what. If we can replay, we'll be able to show why he's out. And for all you youngsters out there, look, once you touch the bag, you got to re-tag. Okay, hold on. <laughs> There's a foul out to the right side. James Crenshaw will pull that up for us. This is a teachable moment here, Roger Cato, well, as far as running I, the bases. I was trying to. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. See, once you tag the bat. Okay. All right, here we go. You see, once you touch the bag, see here, he's made contact. Now, if he's going back, he's got to reestablish contact with the bag to go back. Automatically out if he doesn't do that. So he's got to re-tag and re get back to but, first. Yeah, you see. Let's see, right here. We'll see right here that what he does, see, he went to go over and he doesn't reestablish contact. In other words, you got to tag twice. Got to tag twice. So young people out there or parents who are watching, make sure you tell your youngsters about that particular play because it could be crucial in winning or losing the game, especially late in the game. Well, for all the talk of the at-bats, Prairie loses a runner on the bases. And quickly two away, bases empty for Burroughs. He tries to poke it off to the right side. Michael Burroughs, the freshman, at 320 during the regular season. This is the eighth meeting between these two teams. Texas Southern has won five of the previous seven, but this is to keep the season alive. The losers eliminated. And you know one thing, I wasn't able to watch and see whether or not the first base coach mentioned anything to the base runner about that, about not re-tagging. It's such a, uh, a critical thing that Kids have to be taught or told immediately if they don't do something right. So it wouldn't be a problem later on, you got me? And clearly the replay showed he did not reestablish the tag going back to first. So if they threw to second, he was gonna be out if someone was right. paying attention to that. And you do see from time to time, you rarely see it, but you do see strong throws from the outfield if the assumption of the runner might not have tagged up at third coming home. You see that? Right, exactly. And the ball four to Burroughs, and Preview has their second base runner. But a double play took out the first base runner and Burroughs at first. Alex Martinez at the plate, the senior, at 266 during the season. So an opportunity for the Panthers here, Roger Cador at the start. Yeah, they lost a runner via double play, but now they try to get some two-out action going with the walk to Burroughs. Yeah. You know, this uh, tournament play in is so critical. And everybody plays a role in the quality of the game, including the umpire. I'm, I want to highlight it. If you have a home plate umpire who really doesn't understand that you have to expand the strike zone just a little, this is game day two. You need to expand the strike zone just a bit. And it makes the quality of the game better because you're going to force kids to swing the bat. Yeah. And, of course, Antoine Riggins talked about the at-bats. And, of course, you, you saw the game earlier, which Bama State, you know, beat this uh, Prairie View team 11-1. to What did you see in Prairie View or didn't see in the game yesterday? Bama State jumped out 4 nothing, got four runs late, just kind of pulled away. Game ended after seven innings. Well, I, I really, to be honest with you, Prairie View didn't do that bad. They just were out main. You know, they were overmatched. And uh, fly ball in the center, and it's going to be caught in center field by Chase Cromer, who's been involved early defensively. The side is retired. A single, a walk, a double play, and one stranded for the Panthers. We'll take a timeout here. Prairie View, nothing. Texas Southern coming up. Game one, day two, here in Atlanta. We'll be right back on the SWAC Digital Network. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look 
to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Beautiful downtown Atlanta. Glad you could join us here on the SWAC Digital Network. Brave you with some early action. Double play by Texas Southern and TSU, the home team, as you take a look at their lineup. And what is not necessarily what you see is what you don't see. Aylent Adderley not in the lineup for Texas Southern. Charles Bishop, a very interesting uh, substitution by Mike Robb. A decision not to put him in the lineup here in an elimination game. Yeah, we'll have to see if that plays uh, a determinant in today's game, but uh, that's a very big bat not in Texas Southern's lineup today. And they're a team that can try to score some runs, and on the second pitch, a fly ball to right off the bat of C.J. Castillo, and it's caught in right field, one away by Ice, one away. And you're looking at for the Panthers, the righty Victor Mendoza, three and three during the season. 12 starts, 42 strikeouts, and 69 innings pitched. Facing the number two, Chase Cromer. Strike call, one plate umpire, Brian Clark. Bottom of the first inning. Three rivalry games here in the four in day two. Which misses outside. You know, I was talking with uh, Mike Robb before the game, Roger Cador, and he was saying, hey, they know who they're playing. There's nothing more to say. When you have these rivalry matchups, very, very little inspirational speeches. Then you've been a part of that at Southern University when Southern played Grambling. Was, was there much to be said, whether you saw them in the postseason as we have an HBP, Cromer's hit, Texas Southern with their first base runner. When you have a rivalry game, whether in the regular season or the postseason, was there very little to be said about getting fired up for a game like that. No, you know, the kids already knew about what they needed to do, and you don't want to try and get them too hard. Now, this is one of my favorite players. Alexander you know, Olivo. He's got the big, sexy body. <laughs> I have, you know, I had a chance to, to really talk with he, his father and mother, yesterday, and his mother mentioned to me, you told him, talked about my son's body. She said all his life they've been talking about his body. Well, I tell you what, you, 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 you can't complain about his at bat. And no. there it is. There's a base hit here. Extra bases. Cromer around second. Motors in the third. He's going to be way. Oh, they hold him up. They hold him up at third. But Olivo with a double. And Texas Southern has some first inning action. Second and third. Big sexy. Yeah, he's got a new name. <laughs> so, Mom, if you're listening, your son's name is Big Sexy. Well, that was a big at-bat there for Olivo, who Mike Robb felt like he was robbed of a couple of home runs yes. yesterday. Yes. The win did play a factor. There's no question about that. No win to speak of here. And Texas Southern trying to get some, some wind in their sails here, second and third, with Gabe Vasquez at the plate. I tell you what, you know, we have to pick 50 kids who want to play in the, in the, uh, the HBCU All-Star Game in Seattle is uh, July. It'll be difficult for them, for us, to not pick Mr. Oliva. You know, big sexy. <laughs> Alex has got to be there. <laughs> and I'm going to fight and kick and do everything to make sure big sexy Alex Oliva is there. Well, have you, have you cast your vote? Have you made your decisions? In my head, I have. And in your head. On paper, though, not not yet. Well, because I can't do it on paper until we meet. We're going to have a Zoom meeting Monday. Okay. And then we'll meet one more time, and then the ball the ballots must be in. They won't be on the dark well. <laughs> They'll be in where everybody can see them. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Good off speed, just missed. In case you're wondering, why did Roger Cador bring up the dark web? We had a conversation <laughs> about the dark web before the game, and that has stuck with him for over an hour. <laughs> I want to know why I'm on there. <laughs> Three and one to count. 
You're not, Coach. I was kidding with you. Here's a foul ball off to you, the website. Josh, you're such a serious guy. I took you for what it was worth. Nah, I'm just messing with you, Coach. Yeah, well, you can't. <laughs> See, I saw your name out there. <laughs> Here is the 3-2. Oh, yeah. Off speed. See, that's what I'm talking about. I need a strike caller umpire who love to call strikes. That's a good pitch. Well, apparently it's 3-2 now. Look at that. No, well, that's not as good as it. He came back and got him. The umpire didn't miss that bad. I got to give him a little credit. One thing is I'm quick to give credit and tough to tell the truth. Fastball blew it right by him there, Coach. Yeah. Well, Texas I, Southern had some opportunities yesterday, Coach, and here it is again. It was second and third, one out, second and third, two out for the right fielder, Roderick Coffey, with 287 during the season. And we've seen it with teams that are in this situation where they haven't been able to capitalize with that run on third base with less than two out. Oh, that's a must. And you got to bear down in that situation. Coffey, a dribbler too a short. The throw across, and the side is retired. As the Panthers shortstop Donato throws out Coffey. A batter hit, a double. Texas Southern had second and third, one out, and left them stranded. So the Tigers have left two, Panthers have left one. Top two coming up. Scoreless. We'll take a break here on the SWAC Digital Network. there be no doubt you are ready for whatever comes next you've got bars to raise expectations to exceed status quos to rise above and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here which is precisely why we are so proud to support hbcu programs Welcome back to Atlanta. Glad you can join us here on the SWAG Digital Network. The Hall of Famer Roger Cador, our producer James Crenshaw, our crew doing a great job with the replays and the camera angles. Charles Bishop down on the field. Charles Bishop lives in Houston, so he's familiar with this TSU PVU rivalry in all sports. It doesn't matter. It, it gets the juices flowing, Charles Bishop. It definitely gets the juices flowing. I mean, they are an intense rivalry. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be tiddlywinks. Prairie View and Texas Southern, they're going to go after each other. Yeah, just, just, just talk about what you've seen so far. I mean, an elimination game, everything is magnified. You know, we talked with Mike Robb before the game. He said this is a Johnny Holstaff type of game. Now, that's – that's not a name. That means Johnny Holstaff. The whole staff is available. Here's a fly ball to right. And it's one out here in the top of the second inning. The whole staff's available. Charles Bishop will see it at noon. Every arm's available as you try to stay alive. Yeah, you're trying to stay alive, and both both coaches, they emphasize it. All arms are on deck today, so uh, it is going to be a fun, fun day. Guys are trying to stave off elimination. Appreciate it, Charles Bishop. Should be fun, Roger Cato, just the nuances. And you saw it right off the bat for well, Prairie View as they had a leadoff single and a runner – trying to get back to first on a fly ball. So that's something we can put our circle around early in this game. Yeah, there is a sidebar to to the, the loser. He'll save the athletic department money <laughs> that they don't have. That's the sidebar. Oh, you know what I'm saying? As you see, Prairie View's lineup. This uh, this Panther team, I mean, it's it's been tough. You know, overall, not a winning record. But you talk with Antoine Riggins, he's – been a part of this program a few years. He actually played his 
collegiate baseball at Texas Southern, one of the top players in the conference when he played. So he understands what, what this is all about. As you see their lineup with Korea hitting 319 during the season. Right on an inside pitch, down he goes. Well, I tell you, when Riggins played, I, I wish he was played for me. He was one hell of a player. Really? Really a great player. I think I got drafted in the fourth round by Toronto Blue Jays. He really could play. Had tremendous range as a shortstop. You know, could run. There's a fly ball off the bat of Castro to short. And quickly, we're an inning and a half in. Boy, we've had some quick starts to these games as Castillo hauls it in. We played an inning and a half here in Atlanta. Scoreless, bottom of the lineup coming up for Texas Southern. Freeman Jones and Gudo coming up if anyone gets on Martin. We'll be back after this on the Swag Digital Network. East Ballpark here in Atlanta. Glad you can join us. Day two of the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Texas Southern will have Jalen Freeman getting the start for Adderley in left field. Interesting, Roger Kador. That's an interesting substitution by Mike Robb. Is Freeman getting the start in left? Well, he made the switch yesterday. Uh, so I don't know if it's an injury or what. Normally the player of the year, isn't wasn't he the player of the year? Mm-hmm. Or hitter of the year, something like that. Uh, so you know, it could be that he's got a nagging nagging injury. You know, or you never know. Four hundred his average during the year with eight runs batted in. But certainly as a drop down, I need to be careful how I say drop down, you know, because Adderley was certainly the big time hitter. Freeman, uh, this is well hit. Deep right center field. It's going to be caught in center, one away as Jaden Williams hauls it in. So to bring up Jones. Jaden Jones, 282 during the regular season with five home runs and 28 runs batted in. We were talking during the break, Roger Cade, or these quick innings when you have an eight pitch at bat or nine pitch at bat it's great for the pitchers but as a as a head coach yourself quality at bats do, does it get under your skin a little bit when you have when your team is at the plate and you have a seven or eight or nine pitch at bat very quick inning for the pitchers it didn't work a lot does that does, does that disturb you a little bit when that happens well not really but because if my hitters hit three balls on the butt hard Line drive somewhere. How can you fall dead? You got to live with it. You got to live with it. Yeah. Because that's part of the game. Now, in the scheme of thing, you would love for a pitcher to throw a bunch of pitches because the key is to get in that bullpen. There's a ground ball foul outside of third. The key is to get in that bullpen because at the college level, you're not going to have the same quality in that bullpen as what you got leaving the mound. You got me? Yeah. Speaking of the bullpen, we were talking with Mike Robb about that, you know, going deep in his bullpen yesterday when the game kind of got away from him. And 
to your point, Coach, you talked about it yesterday, how when you're up big or down big, you got to save your, your arms. And so you go with maybe your sixth or seventh arm. Experience number one, but you want to save your top arms for the next day, whether win or lose. Right. I mean, Mike Robinson made the right decision with the people he pitched. Uh, sort of like what uh, when Florida and m got up, they went to the little left-hand pitcher. Right. He was the seven, eight, or night guy. Yeah. So, But you have to save the other guy for games you know you're going to need him. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And uh, so all arms on deck, as he told us before the game, he was listing. And he said he's got three or four guys that can throw 90. Goudeau at the plate. Pitch misses outside. Texas Southern lost their backup catcher. Goudeau has been doing the bulk of the catching for Texas Southern. And injuries have been a part of Texas Southern season. There's a bunt trying to bunt it straight back. This is game one, day two, coming up next here on the SWAC Digital Network, Bethune, Cookman, and Jackson State. That was a wild game yesterday, uh, Roger yeah. Cater on the nightcap, Jackson and Gramley. I wasn't surprised, wasn't surprised at all. As a matter of fact, I thought it may be a little more higher scoring because those two teams really can hit the baseball. It was a good game, though. Um, Centurion and I missed you. <laughs> we figured we'd say he's relaxing in his hotel. I was checking out the action. Oh, okay. Oh, here's a oh. high fly ball into left. And it's going to be caught in left for the second out. A lot of fly balls early in this game as Michael Burroughs hauls that in. And it'll bring up the number nine hitter, the second baseman, Shannon Martin. Martin, 300 during the regular season with two home runs and 15 runs batted in. And, of course, uh, Bethune-Cookman, Jackson State coming up next. We'll have that game. That ought to be a good one. You know, Charles, both from the East Division of the SWAG, and, you know, they finished right. Well, Bethune was second. FAMU was third. And J Jackson was fourth, too. I mean, that's the quality of the East. They were really quality this year. When well, you got Jackson Finney Ford. You talk about Omar Johnson. He says the Tigers uh, can be tough to deal with. Here's a fly ball right off the rail down and right. Play could not be made down and, that right side by Weiss. And Jackson did play bad. I mean, Gremlin played better. And the thing that hurt Jackson was the catcher. It cannot be that number one catcher. I got to think that they, uh, that that catcher, number one catcher is not available unless you can find out something different. When you're, I mean, what, what speech can you make if you're if coming out of the loser's bracket? You lose that first game, call third strike here. We'll take that up on the other side as we are through Two innings here in Atlanta, scoreless. Eight, nine, and one coming up for Prairie View in the top of the third inning. Donato Williams at top of the lineup. Ice coming up after this timeout from Atlanta on the SWAC Digital Network. there be no doubt you are ready for whatever comes next you've got bars to raise expectations to exceed status quos to rise above and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here which is precisely why we are so proud to support hbcu programs
You're looking at Amar Donato hitting 248 during the year with 19 runs batted in. Bottom of the lineup. Here's a pitch strike called. Let's check in with Charles Bishop. Charles, you had a chance to talk with uh, Mike Robb about that lineup change and Adderley not being in the lineup. Yes, I checked in with the uh, Texas Southern coaching staff, and, and it is an unspecified uh, injury uh, as to why Dalen Adderley was not able to go. Uh, so uh, that's a big bat. That's an over 400 hitter that's not in the lineup today for Texas Southern. One of the tops in the country as far as batting average, Roger Cador. So you, you kind of assumed with that big bat being out, there was a reason for it, and and obviously an injury is serious enough to keep him out. Whether or not he'll have a pinch hit appearance, we don't know at this point, but uh, not definitely not in the starting lineup. You're right. So, you know, and and when you get to this point, you got to go with who is available. Next man up, you know. You hear that so often, next man up mentality. Yeah. And he was hit by a pitch here as Lotto HBP, you're scoring at home. He's at first. Gonna bring up the bottom of the lineup here. Jaden Williams, as we take a look at it, where was he hit? On his foot? Uh, yeah, on his leg, back or? foot, leg. his right foot. Good, good camera work. Well, we got the best, Jim Crenshaw, the producer, extraordinaire. We've had some pretty good replays and some pretty good angles to look at. Want, 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 want to get back to the speech, Coach, of coming from the loser's bracket. Do you say a lot? Do you say anything? Do you say nothing? Uh, what do you – what do you – It depends. It really handle? depends. It really depends. There's no really set – you know, it depends. Uh, I wouldn't have said too much yesterday. I mean, that's me, but, you know, I'm, I'm not the coach of Prairie View or Texas Southern. I think Mike Robb took it pretty good. He realized they lost. He said, hey, once we got behind, he realized he had to make, well, I'll be. A runner is going there. He was already <laughs> there. <laughs> this is how you not win games. You know, you have to say, okay, he got a great jump. So I, I don't have to bun it. You got me? Yeah, so. It's so instantaneous. Well, it's. Those things may come from talking to kids, you know. So that was a pitch you would have laid off of with the good I would have jump. been yelling, t take, lay off of it. Now, rather than you have a man on second base, that ball is carried. And it's all the way to the double. wall. It's going to be a ground rule double. He said, that's better. I hit it. <laughs> Boy, did that ball carry. It sure did. And the wind blowing a little bit from left to right. Ground rule double. I told the commissioner yesterday that we're above level, the sea level. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty good pitch to hit, Coach. Yeah. Well hit. And the ball is beginning to carry better. Started after you left yesterday, Charles. The last two games, the ball traveled a lot better. Harrison Weiss, the second and third for the Panthers. So Texas Southern. Let's straight at two in the first. The Panthers have two on in the third. Pitch Remember, high ball teams one. haven't done well in getting runners in from third. We're less than two outs. Well, yes. Right now we have no outs, so let's see. All you need to do is make contact. They're giving it a short and second. There's a foul off to the left side, and Weiss singled his last time up. Panthers in the first inning had a leadoff single and a fly ball to center. As Weiss didn't get back to first, he was going, and then didn't tag up, didn't get back to first, he was doubled up. So the Panthers, top of the lineup, trying to get it done here. To give Weiss trying to give his team the lead. Chopper to short. Oh, the sh runner. They're going to try to throw home, and he is safe at home. The shortstop didn't do a good job. He held the ball too long. Look what it slow drew. Look at the guy hesitated. Too oh, many he sure steps. Did. Yeah. Too many steps. He's out. He never got to the bag. Oh, look at that freeze. Oh, he never touched the bag. Let's see what the producer says. Well, they're they're gonna this might be challenged here. The umpires are getting together. It was a poor base running. Uh you see where he hesitated? 
And this will be challenged. This will be looked at. There was two mistakes. Well, the runner did make a bigger mistake as the fielder. That angle is hard to tell. He never got to the back. He's blocking it. You see, see his foot never got there. Now here's the angle. Okay, but we want to see the, the, the shortstop. Watch it. See, he's blocking. Can't get there. Never got there. Mm, interesting. Now, keep in mind, for those watching, the umpires are looking at it just as you are watching it. The freeze frames, the back and forth, the rewinds, they're looking at it in real time just as you're watching it. Well, from what they could see here, he never tagged. The thing that made this play close was the shortstop with all the extra steps. He double clutched? Well, he took five, six steps before he threw the ball. If we can keep it going back, Greenshaw, let it go back. Okay. See, he never touched the bag. See, that's what they're going to see here. His left foot was the one that would have got there. And I know the, your thing is it has to be more to overrule. Yeah, it has to be overruling evidence to overturn yeah. the call. Let's see, watch his left foot, which is the one that's leading. See that? It never gets there. Never gets there. See that? Before the tag. He's blocking with the right, his left foot blocked his right foot, and the left foot never touched the bag. The question is with that tag on the, the back of the calf, was but it doesn't that, matter, it, he's, he never touched the bag. So this is getting a good long look here. Let's see, right here. See, he doesn't touch it. He's tagged, he still doesn't touch it. Now he tried to touch. What you said, Mr. Producer? It's, they're taking a look at it here. So this is being looked at, a good long look. And again, the ruling on the field is that he's safe. So he's there, out. So there has to be some evidence there to overturn the call on the field. The question is, is there enough there to overturn it? Well, it's, to me it is, you gotta touch the bag to be safe. Yeah. So this is getting a good long look here. I mean, this is an elimination game. Someone's season's gonna Let end. Come. All right, here we go. Here we go. There He's out. Go. The producer's on it. He's on again. <laughs> He's five for five. And Antoine Riggins is, I mean, he's arguing this case, but it's already, it's already been looked yeah, at. Yeah, but yeah, you can't argue anymore. <clears throat> Only thing he could argue about is the catch a block home plate. So, they overturned the call. Well, he never touched the bag, you know. So, Zachary Trevino at the plate. There's a, still a runner at third with one out now, so the Panthers still have an opportunity, a couple, to grab the lead. And, you know, fly to center was a part of that 8-3 double play. Runner going go. here, and a strike call and a stolen base. A Weiss. So the Panthers again, it was second and third, nobody out. On second and third, one out with an opportunity for a run or two and here Riggins, in third inning. Riggins feel he could be aggressive. He's got nothing to lose. And he's gonna drop this one in the left for a base hit, a run is in, and the Panthers with a one nothing lead. Trevino, an RBI single. You know, <clears throat> I don't understand some things, and I guess I never will. I would have had the, off the left fielder in some because the little guy's not gonna hit it over your head. You you you, you gotta play percentage. What are the odds that the, you see he's backing up some more? What are the odds you would go hit it over your head? You take the odds. It's a gambling type of thing. 
more balls are gonna be hit in front of you than up behind you. Yeah. And that's and I used to talk to my players about that. Play percentages. Well the Panthers battle after an overturned call. They stole a base, Charles Bishop. It set it up second and third. Panthers grab the lead despite losing a runner at home. Panthers get on it here and have an early lead. They've got a chance to make a big inning out of here. If I was Coach Riggins, I would be aggressive again. Send the run again. You're playing with house money. That's the way it is, you know. What do you have to lose? You gotta leave it all out. Losers eliminated. Panthers with an early lead. This Panther team only beat Texas Southern twice in seven games in the regular season. You're playing with house money. Not, I would leave it all out there. It's easy to say when I'm in the booth. Huh? <laughs> no, but no, I would. I, he's not going to throw. There you go. A runner he's going listening. here. See, not even not a throw. Gonna, yeah, you gotta. You know. You play with house money, Charles. You know what I'm talking about. Well, for the third time in this inning, the Panthers have second and third. Panthers a run on three hits. And second and third, they can add to their lead here. Girls pumps it foul off to the right side. Got to take a better swing than that. Well, when you're in the loser's side of it, there's not a lot of room for error. Panthers could go up two or three here, and then it gets Mike Robb possibly thinking. You have to do what you can to keep your team in the game. one nothing yeah. Prairie View at the moment, second and third. This is outside. This pitcher, Kate Fontenot, the junior. Seven starts during the season, one and two. Trying to get out of a jam here. Count is two and two. All out to the right side. Well, are you seeing Roger Cador and, and Coach Riggins talked about the quality at bats? He actually worked with his hitters in the cage before the game. Wasn't happy with the quality of bats. Are you seeing better at bats from Prairie View so far? You could see he did do some work and there was a, a good improvement. And and that's what you like to see as a coach is that coach work with the hitters or pitchers or fielders, whatever it may be. And then you're able to see some of the, the kids making the adjustments. Good at bat here by Burroughs battling this pitcher. There you go, look at here. Put the ball in play. And a run's gonna score as Burrell's ground ball scores a run and the Panthers with a two nothing lead. Good piece of hitting here, taking it the other way. It's a quality out, quality at bed. You know, Charles, one of the things that Coach Riggins was working on specifically, and you are starting to see that early in this game, is hitting the ball to the opposite field. I said when they uh, did that on yesterday, they had good at bat. So that's some one of the things that you're seeing here early in this game. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing Roger Cato and Mike Robb talked about it with us this morning, how yesterday the AMU batters really worked his pitchers a lot of at-bats, a lot of pitchers, a lot of pitches thrown, and you're seeing that here. Better at-bats, making the pitcher work, getting the pitch count up. Yeah. And uh, he's got somebody tossing in the bullpen. Bullpen starting to get loose. So all arms on deck when you're in an elimination game and foul straight back. As a matter of fact, before the game, Mike Robb was listing the, the arms. He had about seven or eight that he can go to I mean, everybody is available as you try to keep your season alive. The loser's eliminated. The winner will come back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. As a dribbler to third, it's cut off, and the throw is there. Boy, it was cut off. That was dangerous. Cut off as Jones throws out Martinez, but Braveview with a couple of runs. In the inning, two runs, two hits, and they strand two. And the Panthers with an early lead on Texas Southern, two to nothing. We'll take a timeout. Top of the lineup coming up for a TSU 
One, two, and three, Castillo, Cromer, and Olivo coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network. Welcome back to Atlanta. Producer James Crenshaw, Charles Bishop on the field. Roger Cador, the Hall of Famer. Charles Edmund here, Santoria Black will bring you home the next couple of games on the back end of day two as now Texas Southern backs against the wall a little bit here, Roger Cador, but they have the top of the lineup coming up with the Castillo, Cromer, and Olivo. And now Texas Southern down two to nothing. It just shows you in the postseason, doesn't matter what the regular season brought. Prairie View lost five out of seven games this Texas Southern team. It's still early, a third of the yeah. way through, but uh, better at bats, quality at bats, Panthers with the lead. Well, they're the better team right now, uh, Prairie View. They're playing as well as you could play, and that's a good sign. Uh, we were all concerned about, after yesterday, the coach spent an awful lot of time trying to get them, you know, talking to them, so I'm happy to see the result have been positive. Antoine Riggins was in the cage, was very intentional. I mean, this was 8.15 8 this morning, just really going over the fine details at the plate. Ground ball to third across, and it could not be scooped at first. Ground ball to Korea. See how they rule that. That's an error. And if you don't make these routine plays, you got big sexy coming up. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's not. He's getting the bat. And so it is an E5. And it'll bring up Chase Cromer, who was hit by pitches last time up. Oh, lead off is on for Texas Southern. Remember, they stranded two in the first. First time the lead off is on. Here's a bunt. Pitcher trouble, feels. Trouble. The throw is low. Trouble. And that can't be handled. That's another error, I believe. A poor throw. The first From base Mendoza. we got in no man's lane. Can we run that back? Yeah. Where would he come? The ball wasn't bunted hard enough. The pitcher ball all the way. And we have a visit to the mound, and this obviously is disturbing. Well, you just scored two runs. And you you hit a routine, a good, the routine ball, and they made an error. And now routine bunt, and you get an error. So that's the kind of stuff that can, uh, you know, demoralize uh, a team that is trying hard. But the good thing is the pitching coach immediately went out to try and calm his pitcher down. Yeah, I mean, and it, it is, it can be frustrating for a pitcher to try to pitch around that. I mean, it could very well be two out. Yeah, it should have been. So you got two errors behind you, and then the big bat Olivo at the plate. He doubled his last time up. Big Olivo, sexy. a shot foul down the right side. He just picked up a new name, Big Sexy. Not everybody can get a nickname. You have to be good to be able to get a nickname. <laughs> really, it's hard to name somebody and give them a nickname unless they're good. Anthony Macon, the pitching coach for Prairie View, coming out. And now you got to be careful here because if you lay one out here for Olivo, he'll give his team the lead. you got a base open, but there's nobody out. There's no base open. 
It's a base that's not occupied. <laughs> it's not open. Well, a base is not occupied. But how do you how do you pitch to Olivo, considering his threat, considering there's nobody out? <laughs> you don't want to groove one to him. No, this you got to try and pitch to him. He might hit a ground ball, get you two. You know, you don't know. Remember, it's still a game of failure. Okay, even as good as Olivo is. The chances are he could hit a ground ball right at people. So, we'll have to see. Well, first and second, a couple of errors. Panthers defensively has set this up. Two on, none out for Olivo. Fastball just missed. And the count is three and one. I don't think they're messing around with him. Three and one the count. Mendoza pitching out of a jam. Base is loaded. I got to give Big Six Six credit. He showed really good discipline. Most guys want to hit, 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 and then they swing at a lot of balls. But Big Six Six took the base on ball. That's telling me he's got plate discipline. Well, base is loaded, nobody out. The best chance for Texas Southern in this tournament right here. You got the cleanup at the plate. Gabe Vasquez, who struck out his last time up. Vasquez with nine home runs during the year, second only to Olivo in that category. Bases loaded, nobody out. There is a long fly ball. This ball's gonna be caught in right, runner tags, and the throw is cut off, and the Tigers are on the board. Sack fly by Vasquez, scoring Castillo, two to one, Prairie View. That was a good sacrifice fly because he was able to advance the runner from second to third and get the runner from third to home. So that was a quality out. So two things done right there. Fly ball foul off to the right side. Well, Charles Bishop, we might be in for a good one here. Back and forth. The Tigers of Texas Southern taking advantage of a couple of errors in there on the board. And you know Mike Robinson talked about winning the freebie war, so those were a couple freebies, those errors, and one unearned run comes in. And they're trying to tie it up here. And the history have been with all these other teams, you score and then you come back and give runs up. You notice <laughs> that's happening the last four, three or four games. Two to the one game here, tying run at third. Now There's a long take. fly ball deep left field. This ball's going to be caught and left. Oh boy. Left fielder Burroughs stumbled to get back, but he did. He got there and he tied the game on another sack fly. And that's winning baseball. You got to be. They've scored two runs without a hit. Without the eight of a hit. This is how you win baseball games. The line score right now for Texas Southern in this inning. Two runs, no hits, one error. There were two errors that set this up. So they've made the Panthers pay for those two errors. Yes. Pitch strike call to And Jaylen because Freeman. they were afraid to pitch to Big Sexy, they <laughs> ended up walking him, which, you know, the other two guys did the job by hitting sacrifice fly. So those two errors cost Prairie Ends up all off to the right side. Those two errors cost the Panthers. Olivo at first. So, just like the Panthers jumped out, here comes Texas Southern. Two runs without a benefit of a hit, two errors and a walk. 2-2 two -two game. Oh, There's a little flare off the end of the bat, fielded at third, and the throw that is out. out at first. Oh, great play at first, towing the bag. At first base, Alex Martinez. Let's look at that. Toe in the bag, huh? Toe in the bag. The toe on it. Well, that's a tough play. Yeah, a tough play, but a good play. Yeah. yeah. He's on it. He towed yeah. it. He towed it. Inning over, but the Tigers of TSU tie it up. Two runs, no hits, two airs, a walk, and one stranded. Texas Southern has left. Three. We play three. Two two game. When we come back, the middle of the lineup, Martinez, Jonas, and Korea coming up here on the SWAC Digital Network.
There's a ground ball up the middle. It's a base hit. You could see that whatever Coach Riggins worked on with his team, they're really bringing it to the field by doing good basic swings, you know? Well, Jonas leads off with a single, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the second time, no, the third time in four innings that the leadoff has been on for the Panthers. To throw the first, I, I bring that up. When you get the leadoff man on, that's critical in terms of trying to score a run. When you get the, the first man on base, that changes the dynamics. How so? Usually. Usually. How does it usually do that? Well, it, it gives you a chance to, to do a lot of things from an offensive standpoint. You can hit and run. You can sacrifice bunt. You can steal. I mean, you can do so many more things uh, that it allows you to do uh, uh, than if you don't get them on. Runner going here, pitches go. inside, a double clutch by the catcher, and the throw is too late, a stolen base. The catcher, Goudeau, double clutched. Yeah, once your double clutch is over with. See, that's one of the things that Van is getting that leadoff run on. Now you still have uh, the bunt that you can do, sacrifice him to third base. Oh, they swung at a ball here. So you look at Jonas, only had one stolen base during the year. Very aggressive. Antoine Riggins really turning these guys loose. He's got nothing to lose. You're playing with house money. Two and one to count. This 2-2 two -two game. Pitch is low and inside. When you play with house money, man, you're trying to win at the expense of the house. <laughs> play with their money. Three and one to count. Time for the fourth inning. Don't forget in the fifth, we'll hear from both head coaches, Mike Robb and Antoine Riggins. Foul off to the left side. Top of the fourth inning. Texas Southern's bullpen was busy. I think guys just kind of milling around. There's not much margin for error. Well, he's doing, he's comfortable with his pitcher, you know, Fudno. And uh, he can let him go a couple more innings. There's a curve, stays alive. Count is three and two. Don't forget up next, Bethune-Cookman, Jackson State. Right here on the SWAC Digital Network. FAMU, Bama State at three. And in the nightcap, Southern and Grambling. Here's the pitch. Hey, outside, ball four. Two you on for the got, Panthers. Now you still got the sacrifice, but hold up. He's got to come back. What is this? He said something. That's the only thing that could have happened. Maybe he said something. A warning from the umpire has been given to a Prairie View player. What did he say? That was a warning Yeah. a Prairie View player in the dugout. Oh, okay. Look. Was it the runner? I mean, I don't understand kids today. Oh, if you just go down there, and why jeopardize your team, you know? And yeah, something was said either by the runner or from the dugout. A warning, but nonetheless, two on for the Panthers. So the Panthers grab the lead. Texas Southern comes right back, and then the Panthers are coming right back. That's been the MO, man. You score, they're going to score. Because the, the pitchers don't know how to come back and command, take control of the next inning, you know? Well, you expect a, a bunt here, Roger Kador? Yes. Two on, none out. And square it up, Castro lays it down. It's a good bunt, and it's gonna be a bunt single, and they're loaded up. Perfectly placed bunt by Castro. We can play that back, Crenshaw. Now, let me show you the mistake the third base made. Obviously, you want to stay as long as you can. 
The ball is burning hard. He meter, you know. The pitcher can't get it. Why are you going back to the bag? See, immediately you knew the pitcher could not make the play. So you got to come get it. You got me? So let, we're showing it back. We're showing it, running it back. It's a good bunt. And the pitcher, he made it where the third baseman had to come get it. He made it the third baseman come get it, but he didn't come get it until too late. You see what I'm saying? So young kids, if you're out there watching, Yes, if the ball is bunted to the pitcher, you want to go back to the bag, and you can have a full out. Other than that, you got to come and get it out. The name of the game is out and runs. Those are the two things that help you to win or lose. Was that a bunt that? It was an out. First, that, was that a bunt the pitcher could have got no, to more so? No, 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 no. So the pitcher was out of that play altogether. And I'm sure they work on that play a lot because I know Coach Robinson. Yes. He just made a mistake. A minimal mistake by going to the bag. All right, so bases are loaded. Nobody out for the Panthers. It's back and forth. Both teams have had the bases loaded. Bottom of the lineup. And Charles, with that last play, the, the bullpen just got stirring down there in the Texas Southern. Yeah, there is there is no margin of error at this point. Bases loaded, nobody out. I mean, it's just a 2-2 game. Sure, Texas Southern would love the double play here. There's a dribble right back to the pitcher. The throw home is there. Could it be a double play? No. Ooh, I want to see that. A one to two fielder's choice. Let's see that. There's no question about the play at home. Pitch right there in front of the pitcher. And here's the throw across. He's safe. Yeah. Again, the bad footwork at first base. You should touch the bat with your right foot, and then your left out there, you extend. But he's had his right left foot on the bag. Jaden Williams, the number nine hitter at the plate. The bases remain loaded for Prairie View. Well, this Texas Southern pitcher, boy, he's trying to pitch out of a jam. Bases loaded, nobody out. Now bases loaded, one out. Let's strike called. It's a single, stolen base, a walk and a bunt single, then a fielder's choice kept, keeps the bases loaded with one out. Which is high. Count is two and one as you see Texas Southern's bullpen is busy. Justin Barnes, the junior righty, as you see throwing in the bullpen. The two one. Top the middle, skips Little through a base in. hit. Panthers regain a one run lead, a two run lead. As bobbled in center and the Panthers back out in front. <laughs> Single by Williams scores two, and the Panthers lead four to two. Ball, a hot shot up the middle. Top of the lineup. Garrison Weiss at the plate. Top of the lineup for the Panthers. Hitting the ball back up the middle. Brady was out hit Texas Southern six to two. And the Panthers lead four to two. Talk of Antoine Riggins frustrated with the quality of bats yesterday. Here's a squeeze play. Does it work? Yes, sir. Run is in. Panthers lead five to two. Squeeze home a run here, Roger Kador. Well, that's smart baseball. You got to give Prairie View credit. They've come out and they've ex executed when they had the opportunity. Well, you talk about adjustments, Charles Bishop. Quality at bats, aggressive on the bases, and then they squeeze home a run. Uh, that was a tremendous squeeze. He laid it down beautifully down there in front of the home play. I tell you what, Prairie View, they've come out very aggressive here at the home, uh, very aggressive at the plate, and they're doing just a great job of putting the ball in play, Coach Cater. And up the middle, you could see the work Coach Riggins did with him in the 
in the batting cages paying dividends. Panthers with a five to two lead here in the first elimination game. Run trying to steal third. And, and he's foul. aggressive. <laughs> oh, wow. I love it, coach. Keep it up. <laughs> you, you're playing with house money. And sometimes people are afraid to play with house money. You know, like you, you're not afraid, Charles. <laughs> I actually am afraid, Coach. Huh? I actually am afraid. <laughs> Even though it's house money, it's still money. But it's house money. It's not your money. <laughs> it's not yours, but it's still money. Yeah. But At some point, you're going to deal with your own money. Here's a pitch <laughs> to Williams, a fly ball in the center field. <laughs> That's just me talking crazily. The side is a tie. Speaking of crazy, it's been a crazy start to this one. As the Prairie View A&M Panthers, a team that lost five out of seven to this Texas Southern team during the year, as they say, once you get to this SWAC tournament, all bets are off. 5-2, Panthers with the lead as they get three, including a squeeze play, three runs, two hits. Panthers with a 5-2 lead. They've stranded four. What will Texas Southern have in the bottom of the fourth inning? Freeman, Jones, and Goudeau coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network. What will Texas Southern have to offer here in the bottom of the fourth inning? Jaden Jones will lead it off. Count is one and one. You really have to commend the teams out of, out of the swag uh, for all of the games have been relatively very competitive quality play on the field not a lot of miscues and again I, I go back to what the people from MLB have said to me they're very surprised and happy to see uh, the quality of play exhibit by the teams this weekend this week yeah and then this is some good you know good work a lot of good stuff on tape to be able to look at to see you see it in person Here's a now high fly one. ball, deep left fast balls, well hit, carrying, wind blowing from left to right. That ball was hit and left, held up a little bit, caught and left, one away by Burroughs. That was well hit, just got under it. Yeah. Michael Goodell at the plate coming up in the next inning. We'll hear from both head coaches, Antoine Riggins. I'm sure he's happy right now, and Mike Robb. See what he has to say as this team tries to stay alive. We I got to give Riggins some credit. He's come out and played aggressively. I mean, he's saying, you know, uh, yeah. One and one to count, one out. One and two on a pitch up and in. We talked with uh, we talked with Mike Robb before the game, and he was just talking about the season overall. He said there was a point in which, you know, he felt like the team his team turned the corner, and then just like that, it pivoted the other way. And over the last few weeks, we haven't been able to get it back to where he had it midway part of the season, in which TSU was playing some really good ball against Grambling, a big series, and just just shows you the ebbs and flows over a 50-plus game baseball season. Yeah. It's Ooh, good pitch right there. 
Pitch inside on the inside half. It'll bring up uh, Shannon Martin. And, and Coach, you, you know this, baseball's a grind. I mean, you start the season playing in coats and jackets and skull caps, <laughs> and then you end the season here where it's yeah. nice and warm. And so in a 50-plus game grind, you know, Major League Baseball is 162. That's even more of a grind. But baseball is just so much. The ebbs and flows, you just try to figure things out. You know, when 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 do you realize as a coach at what point in the season? And, of course, you had 14 conference championships. Of course, with that kind of success, you kind of knew. But in some teams, I'm sure some question marks. But at what point during the season do you know we got it, we might not? I mean, is it two-thirds of the way through? There's a little shallow center behind second. Who wants it? It's caught in second. Yeah. It was too shallow for center, too far for short, <laughs> but the second baseman Trevino hauls it. And we'll, we'll pick up that point okay. on the other side of this timeout because baseball is a grind for sure. We'll also hear from Charles Bishop coming up with his mid-game interviews coming up. We'll start that after this timeout. Preview with a 5-2 lead. Middle of the lineup coming up. Burroughs, Martinez, and Jonas coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network. there be no doubt you are ready for whatever comes next you've got bars to raise expectations to exceed status quos to rise above and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here which is precisely why we are so proud to support hbcu programs We welcome you back to Atlanta. The Prairie View Panthers are up to bat. They lead five to two. Mid-game interviews, Charles Bishop is standing by with Prairie View head coach Antoine Riggins. Yeah, I'm standing over here with Coach Riggins right now. He's going through some more things with his players, but uh, he'll step over here in a quick second. Coach, we were talking in the batting cages earlier about uh, play discipline and pitch recognition. Uh, you guys have been aggressive thus far in this game. What's your assessment? Um, we execute. Um, we're getting guys on and we're able to drive them in. That's something that we didn't get a chance to do yesterday. Um, you know, he's trying to keep us off balance. Um, and he, he did a, a good job of it at the, at the first couple of innings. Um, and I just told the guys, man, you just have to hit the inner half of the ball, um, let the ball travel, and uh, give yourself a chance. Um, if, you, if you're trying to go out there trying to pull the ball, that's what he need for you to do to get you out. So uh, we're executing it right now, and uh, still got a lot more game though. Victor Mendoza thus far is giving you some uh, good uh, innings here on the mound. Uh, how do you see uh, his, his pitching performance thus far? Uh, he's throwing strikes. Right? He's throwing strikes, he's getting ahead, and uh, he's able to get weak contact. So that's all we're going to ask of him. First thing, thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it, Charles Bishop. You see the new pitcher in the game for Texas Southern, Justin Barnes, taking the place of Fontenot, Roger Cador. So obviously, Mike Robb sees this one. Hey, you're down three runs. Prairie View's coming up. They got momentum at the plate, and you want to try to find a way to, to plug the hole, if you will, to keep keep your team around. Yeah, you had to go. Jumping on the first pitch, a ground ball to short in the hole. Throw across. Good play. Man, we've seen some good plays on the infield. One out. Uh, C.J. Castillo, as you see it right here, Coach Cador. Look at that range. Nice range. His older brother, well, not that's it was the one from uh, from Bethune Cookman, played with the last same last name that played uh, played shortstop for him 
but Castro did a really good job. And he, he was able to gather his feet and body, get momentum going toward first base. Alex Martinez at the plate. Wide to second and center. I want to pick up the point from the last half inning, Coach. Yes, sir. Win in a baseball season. And, of course, you always figure your team's got it even when the record says otherwise. But at what point in the season from what February through May, at what point in the season which you, you feel like, you know, either we're going to get this thing or we're not? At what point in the season? Halfway through in May when the tournament rolls around, April? It determines. It determines. It depends on uh, on a couple of things. Are you pitching? really doing good are your hitters hitting good and his defense playing pretty good i mean i didn't want to get... <laughs> well that's a tough play yeah, right. it's short there by castillo in the sun range to his left first down and then backpedaling for the make the catch here for the second out you really don't really know charles until it actually happens i mean you know because some teams peak early and then have a decline. And fizzle late. Yeah, and fizzle <laughs> late. What I tried to do when I was coaching, I tried to make sure that I didn't overload them to get too good early, that we got better gradually. Yeah. I, I like the gradual being better than, you know, you can do it. Historically, we would all be better, better late because of the way we practiced and did things. You know, we didn't do a whole lot early. We did a little more late for conditioning purpose because, you know, people can get in so much good condition and then they decline in their condition. We kept building up to the condition. Yeah. You know. So it's a stepladder process. It's a stepladder process. And we were always better late than early. Three and all the count. When you win 14 championships, you definitely know how it looks and how it feels, and that's what Roger Cador was able to do when he was at Southern University. Well, it, it worked for me. It may not work for the next guy, and I always say that to people. You may not want to try and do what I did, you know, but it worked for me, and I'm living proof. You got me? Well, there are, there are a lot of coaches, former at these other conference schools, that, that did talk about you as a coach and, and your process processes in terms of how you did it. Uh, I mean, you had some great players. You had the Ricky Weeks of the world and others. Um, so, you know, when, when you're winning at a high level, other teams want to copy what you're doing. Yeah, they really want to. And the thing I did, Charles, is shared as much information as I could with the Coach Robinson, with the coach uh, 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 at the uh, Arkansas, uh, Carlos, Carlos James, James, and with Omar. And, and the people Rob is going to visit, huh? Yeah. I mean, already yeah. he's not. He... Well, yeah. You know, I, I always hear when people saw it saying how much pitching they got. I know they ain't got that much pitching. They might have guys with potential. But the big schools don't have them. They're struggling, you know? Now, I got to say Alabama in a state is legitimate to a degree in Pethune Cookman with that pitcher. A new pitcher in the game here for Texas Southern. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be right back after this as the third TSU pitcher coming up, and that's Justin Malone. We'll talk about it when we come back from Atlanta on the SWAC Digital Network.
You're looking at the lefty, James Malone, the sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. The third Texas Southern pitcher who followed Barnes, who followed the starter, Cade Fontenot. And won't be the last. Mike, I think we'll see other pitchers. Mike Robb came out really quick to make that change. Well, they didn't give him the quality. Preview with a 5-2 lead. Pitch inside. These two teams met seven times during the regular season. Texas Southern won five of the seven. Malone, 1-0 during the season. Just five appearances. With an earned run average of 3.38. He only had five appearances? He had five appearances during the regular season. Pitched eight innings. That's not a guy. 11 strikeouts in eight innings. you have a good book on. Count is two and one. First and second, two out. Oh, straight back. This is a big, big part of this game here, Roger Cater. I think Pravey's got all the momentum. He got two out. Made a pitching change. You gotta stop the momentum. Yeah. Two two with two out. This Full is count. a big, big batter. You know. And this is the bottom of the lineup. Paul Castro, one for two, fly to short and a bunt single. And this is the number seven hitter in the lineup. Three two. There's a foul down the left side. Now remains three and two. Coming up next, we'll see Bethune Cookman and Jackson State on the SWAC Digital Network. It's gonna be a fun game. These those two teams know each other well from the Eastern Division. Yeah, they do. That's pitch ball four, and they're loaded up. Two walks and a batter hit. They're loaded for the Panthers. Amar Donato at the plate. He was hit, hitting one fielder's choice. Well, Roger Kador, if you're a Texas Southern fan, hold on here. They're loaded up. <laughs> There's a wild pitch runner trying to score and oh comes my back. Goodness. That ball was thrown kind of high and away and on a line. But you have to anticipate that. You got to score on that. You got to. You remember, you're playing with house money. You got to be aggressive. Even though you don't want to play with it, but that would be. <laughs> because it was on a line, I probably would have held up too. Well, the catcher had to gather himself, go back. He beat the pitcher there. He would have made it. But because he didn't do a good job, he could take a, a bigger walk and leave the third baseman his back. Yeah, nobody's covering. Yeah, so, I mean, all of that, when I was in that box, I'm giving him that information. I'm giving him the confidence. There's a ground ball off of okay, good. third and short. Two runs are going to score. Good. And the shortstop is... Good. Hurt, runner safe, everybody safe. Panthers added to their lead. That's good. Boy, that was a wicked hop. That grazed Texas Southern shortstop Castillo. It went off a third, caromed up, and caught Castillo. Two runs are in, and the Panthers. And he ain't through to going to the bullpen. Have added to their lead. You know. It's seven to two. It ain't over. Mike Robb, could this be the fourth pitching change? There it is. Yes, it will be. And we'll take a break here. We'll be right back. The fourth Texas Southern pitcher, third in this inning, coming up for TSU. As the Tigers are down 7-2, to two, we'll give you the fourth pitcher coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network.
You're looking at the fourth Texas Southern pitcher in Adolph Castillo. 14 appearances during the regular season. And Prairie View has got a little separation between themselves and Texas Southern. Seven to two, seven runs, seven hits for the Panthers. Runner going, fly ball in the deep left center field. This ball is well hit and it's gonna be caught in center. Good running catch in center field by Cromer and the side is retired. But the Panthers with seven runs over the last three innings and for the Panthers, a couple of runs, one hit, two walks, a batter stranded and the Panthers have left five. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Texas Southern's gotta get to work and Mike Robb telling them that, hey, it's time to get to work. That's what Mike Robb is saying. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after this on the SWAC Digital Network. Keep your eyes on the horizon 100% of the time. You are a success story in the making. You are ready to take on the world. You are ready for this. You will get there from here. And you can't wait to get started. And as proud supporters of HBCUs around the country, we can't wait to see how far you go. We welcome you back as uh, if, if you Google right now, Texas Southern and Prairie View, you will see 7-2 Prairie View as Texas Southern comes up in the bottom of the fifth inning. You, we saw the shot of Mike Robb talking to his team, saying, hey, it's time to get to work. Charles Bishop, you just talk with Mike Robb. Yes, indeed, uh, Coach, here with uh, Mike Robinson. Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned today was going to be a dog fight, really intense. Uh, what was your message to your team just now? Uh, just keep your composure, but stay resilient and find some kind of way to put some energy on the bus right now. They got more energy than us. We just need to pick it up and realize that we're in a place where, you know, you want to make sure you keep your, uh, stay on even keel and get some type of flow. So for me, it's just, you know, it all starts with our pitching. You know, we just got to attack the plate more and trust in it and let our guys go out and make play and quit messing around with the plate. Got to control the strike zone. Uh, you mentioned today it was going to be all uh, hands on deck with regards to the pitching staff. You've already gone to your fourth pitcher. Yeah, we, we use them as we can. You know, we would like to get to our shortstop, but uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, we still got a lot of ball game left to be played. Sure thing. Thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it. Charles Bishop with uh, with uh, Mike Robb, the coach of Texas Southern. You know, he was. I was talking with him over the weekend, got a chance to watch the team play, Roger Cador, and – this is the second or third time he's talked about energy level. Mm -hmm. I mean, Prairie View's definitely come out with more energy, more sense of urgency. And uh, Coach Robb's talked about that over the last few days, that uh, he's trying to get his team to play with that energy and that mojo and that motivation. Not saying they're not motivated, but just the energy level. You can definitely tell which team has the more energy level at this point. Well, yeah, it's uh, – and he's trying to get them going because Prairie View has taken over – with the, uh, they're taking control because they've been the aggressor. And, and that's what you wanted to do. When, when they came out, they weren't playing. They were not short on energy. They hit the ball up the middle. You could show, it showed that they had been working on things because they came out and executed it. Uh, lead off is on for Texas Southern. Got some work to do. Down seven to two here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Texas Southern, loser of this game was eliminated. Again, this Texas Southern team beat Prairie View five out of seven during the regular season. They actually had a game 
in Houston early on. It was not a Ooh, that's a trouble. Game. trouble. This is going to be a base hit. Two on for the Tigers. A dribbler down the left side. So you need something like that to happen to get in front of Big Sexy, who is coming up to hit right now. So Olivo's been on base twice, doubled and walked, and with one swing of the bat, he can get Texas Southern right back in it. Yeah. And this is what you play for, where you can get your big thumpers up there. Pitches low. Now, are you in a situation, there's a lot of, here comes Antoine Riggins. My, here's my question, Coach Cador, is a lot of baseball left. You got first and second, nobody out. You got your big bat, who was kind of robbed of a home run maybe two yesterday. Do you take the bat out of his hand and sacrifice or do you turn him loose here? <clears throat> what you mean? Well, you better explain that to me one more time. You talk, who take? Who is going to take the bat out of his hand? <laughs> well, what I'm saying, take the bat out of his hand, <clears throat> meaning sacrifice. Why would you do that? I, I'm just, just, just playing it out here. No, I mean, you can't play it out. That's not fair. <laughs> you got the one guy you have who can hit the ball out the park and you're going to sacrifice him? And you're down? I, 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 I get it. I, would, I wouldn't ask the question if this were the eighth inning. But this <clears> is the fifth inning. Doesn't matter if it was the first, second, third. Okay. You never take the bat out of that guy hand with a sacrifice. Because one swing of the bat, he can give you three runs. Yeah, he can. If he sacrifices, he gives you no runs. I'm just just playing the playing the point of you know you move him along second and third and you get a base hit. Yeah, well, that's why you don't sacrifice. That, that's why I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Here's a base hit. Yeah. He's gonna drive home a run and a run in the third and Olivo gets it done. That's why these players are down there and that's why Charles Edmond is up here. But I know what you're doing. You're asking the question for the one person out there, one person somewhere in the audience who doesn't understand the game, and that's all right. <laughs> You got me? Yeah. I, I, again, I brought it up because it's midway part of the game. But yeah. all that theory is thrown out the window as Olivo drives home a run, three hits in this inning, and it's 7-3. to, th on, seven to three. You never want to take the bat out of an Olivo big sexy's hand. <laughs> that, you know. Charles would never question the skipper. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. It's just you, you, you play both sides of it. Oh, oh, there and it a long is. One in the right field, and this ball is going to go, and we got a ball game. Whatever Mike Robinson said to, he got a final. <laughs> game. The head. Vasquez touches them all. A three run home run, and it's seven to six. Well, Gabe Vasquez puts his team right back in it. He had nine home runs during the season. And it's the fourth straight hit. This one a three-run shot, and here comes Texas Southern. Well, that Charles Bishop, that uh, motivational speech that Mike Robb gave paid off. Here comes Texas Southern with four in the fifth. I, and uh, that was a moonshot as well. I mean, I tell you what, whatever he said, uh -oh. it's really working right now. There's another long one hooked foul off the bat of Coffee. You want to sacrifice, Charles? <laughs> you want to give out? Well, Antoine Riggins came out, and Texas Southern has come out here with four in this inning. Coffee, 0 for 2. His sack fly tied it up at 2. Bullpen busy for Prairie View. A little bit more sense of urgency there. There's a fly ball right side, and you can just tell a little pep in the step from Texas Southern at the plate. Yeah, you got, you know, they're picking it up a little. How about this game? Total 13 runs, 13 hits as a shot too short. It's only been one inning where somebody didn't respond with run. Somebody scored. They always come back and score. Yeah. And this has been the history of the last three or four games. Four runs, four hits, three straight singles, and a three-run home run by Vasquez has made it a game. And there's a foul. Boy, they're getting their cuts now. Roger Cato at the plate. Freeman. Because you mentioned you wanted Big Sexy to sacrifice. <laughs> Once you did that, that was all over. <laughs> yeah, it was all you, downhill you, for me. You lit a fire on them. <laughs> huh? Yeah. They heard it. 
Man, they want Big Sexy to sacrifice. One and one, the count one out. Yeah. Here's the one one. Two and one. I was just trying to play a safe scenario. Yeah, you you were trying to ask a question for that one person. Out there. You know, it's one person. <laughs> Uh, Two and one the count. It's like taking the bat out of Barry Bonds' hand. Th that's exactly what you, you 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 yeah. never want to do that. Yeah. Count is two and two. Well, but it definitely can, paid off. But can I say it a couple of times, Ricky Weeks, try to sacrifice without me asking him to? And I'm in the third base. What is he doing? <laughs> and fortunately, both times they went foul. <laughs> and you know what happened the next pitch? What? He hits it out. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, R R R Ricky Weeks was it, thinking it, like Charles Edmund was it, thinking. In, in tournament play, we were playing in Shreveport against Alabama A&M at the time. Fly ball to third on the infield. And he tried. By Korea. he tried. He was being a great team player. I'm upset. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Please go foul. <laughs> It'll bring up Jaden Jones. Big inning for Texas Southern. Started out with Castillo and Cromer singles. RBI single by Olivo made it 7 to 3. Then a three run homer by Vasquez and Texas Southern's back in it 7 to 6. And I was, con I was convinced. One of the reasons we were so successful as a team is because of the attitude of the players. Ricky Weeks took it upon himself to be a team player and try to sacrifice. You got me? Yeah. You know, so he put the pressure on everybody else. If Ricky's going to be, we got to do our job too. Mendoza got a visit from Mariana, Mario, Mario Mendoza, mm -hmm. the Mendoza line. Victor Mendoza. Yeah, but Murray, it made Mendoza famous. Play shortstop for Pittsburgh Pirates. He hit on the 200. Tying run on first. You got to know your baseball, Charles. Yes. You remember Mario Mendoza? I do. I do. And he, he came with the line, the Mendoza line, because he batted under 200. <laughs> <laughs> Batted under two, the Mendoza line. You remember. Yeah, I wonder where that line, the Mendoza line. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Exactly. Now See, I'll put it together. If you let me talk, you won't let me talk about the whale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't mention Mendoza. <laughs> Goudeau at the plate. It's been a big inning for Texas Southern, and it continues here. Runner at first, one and one the count. Well, you talk about lighting a fire under your team. Mike Robb in between innings did just that and his team has responded with four in this inning. You talked about he was bobbing his head. That was the reason. <laughs> I saw that head doing this too. Yeah, he was not happy, but his team has responded as Goudeau flies to twice. side is retired. The first four get on, four runs, four hits, and one left. We'll take a break here. We got a ball game, ladies and gentlemen, seven to six. Brave you coming right back at you in the top of the sixth inning. We'll get to it after this. As you see, the big swing, the big bat in this game, Gabe Vasquez touches them all. Top six coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network.
Seven to six, the Panthers with the lead. There have been 13 runs in this game. Opportunistic to say the least. 13 runs on 12 hits. And here come the Panthers. What will they have to offer now that Texas Southern's back in the game? We're underway here in the sixth inning. We shall see. Pitch to Burroughs, which is low one and one. First of four games coming up. Up next, it'll be Bethune, Cookman, Jackson State. There's a ground ball to third. The throw across is there. A little momentum, Roger Kador, to Texas Southern. You see the little pep in their step here, even going to the outfield in their positions. Pep in the step. Ever heard of that one? Pep in the step? Yes, sir. Jaden Jones with the strong throw across. Yes, sir. Even when you're dancing. <laughs> uh, Trevino at the plate. Another ground ball. To second and quickly two away. Oh, dropped. No. He was trying to throw. The Drop crowd with this Levo. first second babes and wait that long to throw the ball. See, look at here. This is the problem here. You see, that's the problem. Throws it low. No, he never, he never had it. He never had well, it. Well, now they're going to talk this over. Is this going to be looked at here? Look, the ball is out. All right, let's take a look. Oh, he got it. Well, let's see here. They're taking him. All right, so, yep, they say he's out. Yeah, he's got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah he's got it. The producer, James Crenshaw, is correct again. <laughs> the guy's got a magic wand. Well, I think I think in that case, I don't think a review was needed. Ooh. He got oh. it. It's good. It's good. Oh, that's close. Doesn't matter. That's good. <laughs> Strike call. He's trying to he's trying to get to this. Yeah. Once he catches and trying to get there, this is good. Well, two out when the umpires got together. Quickly two out in the inning. Burrows at the plate. There's nothing to argue about. Burrows grounded to short, grounded to second, that drove home a run and is walked. Well, the momentum was all with Prairie View, and here comes Texas Southern, and now the momentum is with them at the moment. They can get this third out. It'll continue to be that way. Seven to six. Okay. My ball in the right center field. This ball's oh. well hit, carrying, and it's going to be caught up against the wall. Well, the wind carried that one, didn't it? As Cromer with the running catch. Side is retired. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. 9-1-2, and two. Shannon Martin, C.J. Castillo, and Chase Cromer coming up. That's a good play, good running catch. We'll be back after this from Atlanta on the SWAC Digital Network. there be no doubt you are ready for whatever comes next you've got bars to raise expectations to exceed status quo to rise above and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs
New pitcher in the game, Tyrone Ty Tubbs, the righty. Pitches inside, ball one. Ty Tubbs, 6'2", 205-pound redshirt junior from New Orleans. Pitching for the Panthers. We've got a one-run game. The losers eliminated. The winner of this game will come back and play tomorrow at 9 against the loser of FAMU and Bama State. Count is one and two. Well, it's been a seesaw game. Panthers led seven to two, and then Texas Southern with four in the fifth. Lazy fly ball in the right. And hauled in and right field by Weiss. One away. Top of the lineup for Texas Southern. C.J. Castillo. It's one of four games here. Coming up next, it'll be Bethune, Cookman, and Jackson State. And Centoria Black will have the back end with FAMU, Bama State at three. Another rival. Well, it's becoming that. It may have always been that. You know, being familiar with the East a little bit. I'm learning, Roger Cador, that FAMU and Bama State are pretty good rivals. I was on a podcast the other night. Mm -hmm. Those two schools, four hours, three and a half, four hours apart. And a uh, nice little rivalry between those two. So those yeah. two, they'll meet each other at three. And then another big rivalry in which you, 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 don't, you don't even have to talk about it. Southern and Grambling. Yeah, that's a big rivalry. Uh, historical proportion. And, uh, you know, it goes back a long ways and it'll be interesting. Well, Tonight. but okay, so I'll, I'll, I mean, obviously they'll talk about it later. But I remember you telling me about that that rivalry, and on on the surface, you would think Southern and Grambling were big rivals, and they are. But but I remember, but, but I remember you telling me Jackson, Jackson State, yes, Jackson yes. is the bigger rival. It is nowadays, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. But Jackson State is the one. People don't get as excited about Gremlin as they do playing Jackson State. I, I guess I'm making the in-state comparison. Here's a ground yeah. ball to second. Bang, bang, play at second. Yeah, probably that's what you're making, but. Trevino throws out to steal. I think that that's where I'm caught up in it. Yeah. Two teams in the same up. state. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you, you make that connection. So that, that's where my assumption all were all these years. But Jackson snuck in there some kind of way, got in there, and I think, you know, it just did it bypassed Southern Duke Gremlin rivalry. Now I'm sure in North Louisiana, Southern Gremlin is big rivalry. You got me? But in Baton Rouge, it's Jackson, Jackson State. State. It's Jackson State. Has it always been that way, or was it a point no, at which it turned? Grambling used to be there, but it's Jackson now. The curveball strike call. It's Chroma Jackson. Reached and on I, an air, singled in, was hit by a pitch. And I think it's because of football. Something happened with football, and they just it trickled over to baseball. Keep in mind, during my tenure from 80 – Five to 2001. Brandy and I played for the championship every year except for maybe five or six years. You got me? So, so that's probably where the rivalry really yes. grew and blossomed. It really grew and blossomed. Two and two the count, two out. Full count. Well, you know who's on the on-deck circle, Alexander Olivo. His uh, you RBI. You keep pronouncing the man's name wrong. It's Alex Big Sexy. Olivo. <laughs> I'll stick with the uh, with Olivo. Here's oh, the pitch low ball four. I can't believe. <laughs> now why would they throw a curveball to that guy three two with Big Sexy coming up? This is the kind of pitch calling. You understand what I'm saying? You tell me what's the philosophy behind this. Tell me what's the philosophy would be. Who would you rather pitch to? Right here. You would rather pitch to him? No, I'm sorry. 
but while I was looking at the replay, yeah, yeah, yeah you would pick, you want to pitch to Cromer. Yeah, why would you throw him a curveball three two? And I'm telling you, now you got lucky. <laughs> but my point is, you're not gonna get lucky like that every time. You yeah. got me? Well, that takes care of Texas Southern in the bottom of the sixth inning, one stranded. We go to the seventh inning. Good one brewing here, seven to six. Panthers with the lead. And for Prairie View, four, five, and six, Alex Martinez, Jonas, and Correa coming up after this timeout on the SWAC Digital Network. Middle of the lineup coming up here for the Panthers, seven to six. Martinez, the first baseman, 0 for three. Texas Southern's gone through four pitchers. I tell you what, the umpire have settled in pretty good. You know, he's been consistent with his strike zone, even though I didn't like it in the beginning. But. High ball in a shallow center. Caught in center by Cromer. And you like to give people credit where credit is due. You know, uh, but the umpire is really settled. Yeah. And he's done a good job. Hadn't been a lot of question his call. So even though I, I wanted the biggest zone at the beginning of the game, you got me? Yeah, you haven't heard a lot of complaints about the strike? No. About the strikeout. Here's a long one in the deep left field. This ball's well hit, and this ball's going to go. It's a home run. Marshall Jonas, the DH, adds to the Panther lead. It's eight to six as he touches them all. And it just shows you Roger Cato in the tournament. You never know. Jonas did not hit a home run during the regular season. <laughs> He had 14 runs batted in, and he just gave his team a two-run lead. Sort of like Bucky did in 1967 to one against the Red Sox, <laughs> against Mike Torres in the playoff. The playoff, he hits him off of the Green Monster. Well, he hit this one over the John and Mary Brock football facility. <laughs> and that was hit against the win, Charles Bishop. The wind blowing strongly left to right, and you talked about it, and uh, that was hit against the wind, and um, it, it gives him a two-run lead. Yeah, that was an impressive shot because, as you mentioned, the wind looks like it's, it's blowing in now. Charles Bishop, you were talking with uh, Tyrone Tubbs in between innings. Of course, he faced Olivo, and Roger Cador talked about how he got away with one, and uh, what, did, what did Tubbs tell you coming into the dugout? Yeah, he agreed with that. He kind of <laughs> bugged his eyes a little bit and said, yeah, yeah, I, I got away with one on that one. Olivo didn't touch it, but uh, he hung one for him. <laughs> Roger Cador, you, you have talked about it. Here's a ground ball to the right side, and the throw across is there, two away. Well, you know, percentages say, you know, certain things dictate certain things. You know, in this business, as in life, if you're going to compete, you always, and you had to pick the best person, who would you rather, the, the one that's, 
that's maybe short on talent or the most talented. You got me? Yeah. And trying to win, you know. I, I think I made a statement yesterday and it offended some people about with talent. There are people with a certain amount of talent and there are other people don't have the same amount of talent, you know? Well, there's a talented base hit hit by off the bat of Castro. He's I like base. Castro. He's making the turn. That's first turn I've seen that I love all this uh, the uh, first two days. That's the way we used to teach him, make that wide turn. Because if there's any bobble, you can take second. And he did it just right. Look at him. Look at that. He did it right. Made the wide turn. He went there and look all the way. That's the way you do it, man. Well, he's on base for the third time. Two singles, a walk, and he flying to shorts. Bottom of the lineup here for the Panthers. And a swing and a miss. By Donato, he has been on base three times. A fielder's choice, and his single made it seven to two, and he was hit by a pitch. And you talked about why Southern was successful. Was successful because little things like that they did. It wasn't the big things. It was all the little things that added up. You got me? To added up, and they became big. You know, we didn't have to go no dark way up to find it. <laughs> it was right there. Oh, and to the count. <laughs> That information on the dog web ain't worth the ink is, <laughs> the paper is written on. One and two the count. Well, it's been some game here. Seventh inning, first elimination game, day two, eight to six. Here's the pitch outside. I see Omar Johnson just walk in the park. He looked like a young man. I thought maybe he might have been one of the players. Mark Johnson, very. Maybe he's going to talk to Charles over there. They look like they're good friends. You know, Mark Johnson's done a nice job at Jackson State. He really has. Tough loss last night. A couple of years ago, they went 24 and 0. Year in and year out, Jackson State's always a threat. They've got a yeah. big game coming up next against Bethune Cookman. Teams that you're very familiar with in the Eastern Division. Game's coming up next. Good one here, eight to six in the seventh. You doing that game? Yes, sir. There's a foul off to the right side. You must have some hell of a contract. <laughs> you get to do the two games and go home and sleep. I get to do the. I'll probably stay to check out the other two, the FAMU Bama State and the Southern Grambling. Those two will be very entertaining later. Yeah. Victoria Black will bring you those. Here's a shot foul off to the right side. And as you get down, you get down to the nuts and bolts of it. You've got the elimination games, and then you got the teams that have won. You get into the loser's bracket. It gets really interesting. It gets really fun, a yeah. chess match. Yeah. I've been there, Mr. Edmund. Yeah. yeah. And you, you get an opportunity when you've won. You get a chance to kind of relax a little bit. But when you don't, Wonder if maybe this is a question we can ask. When you when you lose that first game, how much sleep do you get? I mean, are you tossing and turning a little bit? I didn't sleep much if we won, so let alone. Uh, oh, really? I'm, I wasn't a big sleeper. But I w it wasn't because I was losing sleep because of losses. You got me? If so that makes sense. Mile high in the air, caught it third by Jones, and the side is retired. But Texas Southern down a couple of runs. As Prairie View adds to their lead, Marshall Jonas didn't homer during the regular season. You never know what to expect in the postseason as Jonas' solo shot gives the Panthers an 8-6 lead. Middle of the lineup coming up for Texas Southern. Bottom of the seventh, seventh inning stretch. We'll get to it after this from Atlanta here on the SWAC Digital Network.
Texas Southern coming up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gabe Vasquez, his three-run home run made it 7-6, to six, but Prairie View countered with a Marshall Jonas homer to give it an 8-6 lead. Here's a fly ball into fairly deep left center field, and it's caught in center, one away, ranging to his left is Williams. Just missed that one. It's carried. Roger Coffey stands in. Charles Edmond, Roger Cador, the Hall of Famer, James Crenshaw, producer, Charles Bishop on the field. Charles Bishop, high-scoring game here in an elimination game. You kind of expect it, but it's been back and forth, this TSU-PVU rivalry game. Well, we knew it was going to be a high-scoring, uh, just uh, intense affair. When we talked to both coaches before the game, uh, they expected nothing less than this. And money's worth. Definitely so. More quality at bats. That was the story. Roger Cater, quality at bats from Antoine Riggins Ball Club, and it's definitely paid off. And for Texas Southern, they battled, obviously, the heart of their lineup with Olivo and Vasquez as Homer. Put it, put their team right back in it, but still uh, some work to do for Texas Southern. Oh, a lot of work to do. You got Texas Southern has got eight more, more outs to prove themselves. Now you begin, as I said earlier, it's all about counting outs now. You get, it's down to the part of the game where you're counting the outs. Roger Coffey, a pitch on the inside corner. Coffey, exactly agree with that call. Now he's got to protect the plate, two and two. Ooh, it was hit. And Coffey obviously not happy. As he heads the first. Try to bust him inside again. And I don't understand why. Oh. I'd, I'd say stay away from inside, pitch away. The oh. big leaguers don't throw inside much because they don't have control. Well, one of the big stories for Texas Southern, Jalen Freeman getting the start for Adderley in left field, all conference. Best players in the game in SWAC baseball, one of the top hitters in the country out with an injury. Freeman getting the start and left, and he's 0 for 3. He's fly to center twice and to third. One on, one out. Freeman represents the tying run. Hit strike call. Well, a big opportunity for Freeman to at least keep the inning alive. One swing of the bat, he can tie the game. I like the fact my outfielder checking the wind, taking grass throwing up in the air. One of the favorite thing I like to see outfielders do. Freeman, a ground ball to second, throws to short for one, and it's a fielder's choice, a four to six, and Freeman at first with two out. Double play. Oh, they call a double. Didn't slide. Let's see what happens. Now we'll get a good. Okay. Yeah, you got to slide. He didn't slide. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. The play at seconds, the reason why the inning is over. Let's let's look at this right here. Yeah. Up, he did not slide. Yeah, they want you to slide. Well, that takes care of Texas Southern. We go to the eighth inning. Our score, eight to six. Preview with the lead. And the Panthers will have the top of the lineup coming up after this here on the SWAC Digital Network.
Nine, one, and two in the lineup here in the eighth inning. Williams lays down a bunt. Pitcher feels, plants, oh, throws, and he gets them. Now that is a real good athletic play. Good play by Adolph Castillo. What's what's the key here, Coach? He got the ball quick, able to uh, distribute it to his throwing hand and get it over without having to do too much. Top of the lineup. Weiss takes a pitch outside. Weiss singled. Squeezed home a run, grounded to third. That, that squeeze plays big in the grand scheme of this. Yeah. As well as the big home run. The ground ball to third and quickly two away. Two down as Jones throws out Weiss. And Zachary Trevino, he's one for four. His RBI, he had an RBI single, stole a base. Part of an 8-3 double play. Grounded out and fly to center. Well, as you look ahead to uh, Texas Southern, you have the bottom of the lineup coming up for the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's pitch strike called. Loser of this game is eliminated. The winner of this game comes back and plays tomorrow at 9. Whoever plays, they can go home and take a good rest. <laughs> You know, we, we talked about that, Coach, that, and I don't know, it probably doesn't matter what time you play, but, you know, when you're talking about playing three straight 9 a.m. games, what, what's the risk-reward for, for that early start? Because you're not used to playing baseball that early in the day, a swing and a miss. We'll talk about that on the other side. as a 1-2-3 inning, two-run preview lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll take a timeout right here, first of four, as you see the end of the inning here. The Panthers with a two-run lead. They've lost to this TSU team five out of seven meetings during the year. But in the SWAC tournament, all bets are off. Texas Southern coming up on the other side on the SWAC Digital Network. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Charles Edmond here, glad you can join us. Appreciate the opportunity from Commissioner Dr. Charles McClellan, Assistant Andrew Roberts and the SWAC Brass, bringing you another SWAC baseball tournament. Had softball a couple of weeks ago, enjoy that down on the coast, enjoying it here in Atlanta, comfortable weather and some good baseball. You can follow me on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. I'm on Facebook, Charles Edmond. Let me know what you think about the coverage so far. We've had some good games with the Hall of Famer Roger Cador, Charles Bishop, James Crenshaw, producer. Eight to six, and there's a fly ball in the foul territory. Is there a play? Could not be made behind the plate as the catcher Castro going back. First baseman got to help him out there. Close to the rail. Let's look at this, Coach Cato. What do you see in the uh, operation I see here? The first baseman slowing down. It's a better, it's an easier play for him than the catcher. You got me? You know the catchers. Well, again, it's amateur baseball, so a lot of things that should happen don't happen. That's the pitch high. Against good teams, when you don't make plays, they come back and hurt you. So let's see if. Texas Southern is able to capitalize. 
Jones walked twice, fly to left. Jones, a ground ball, Look fair that. down the third baseline. Extra bases, maybe, makes the turn. Nope, a long single for Jones to lead it off. This is why we see, see people don't, that doesn't show up in the scope or, or box score, you got me? But it happens. Michael Goudeau stands in, he's 0 for 3. Struck out, fly to left and right. He represents the tying run. We've seen the ball fly out of here. Charles Bishop, one swing of the bat for Texas Southern can tie the game here. Uh, the ball has really been flying today, so it'll be interesting, especially the right center. You see the wind, uh, the flag is blowing to right center now, so we've seen a lot of balls go out into those pretty ferns out, out there over the right center field fence. Yeah, we've had a homer to right, and we've had a homer to left. And uh, Texas Southern trying to keep their season alive. As Mike Robb coming out. I'll probably just to check on Goudeau who fouled it off his foot. That, that, Trust me, that is not pleasant. Out of all, listen, out of all the foul balls hit off the foot and anchor and knee, this one ain't nothing. <laughs> this okay. one was just a, a baby because it was staying You know, look, yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to ask a player, I mean, you say it's, it's, I mean, I know it's a big deal for them. I guess when it, when it hits you, it is a big deal because it just, it's just the immediacy of it. It's so immediate, it, it, it hurts right away. You try to shake it off and walk it off. You see players go down like a ton of bricks when that happens. The force of the swing, the force of the ball hitting their foot. If I hadn't played the game, yeah, I got hit on the foot plenty of times. Back in the days, though, you couldn't make a big issue out of it. They may call you a name or two. <laughs> Here's you a got me? <laughs> so in other words, just, just, just shake it off. Just shake it off and keep going. <laughs> but know? if you're in pain, if, if, if you hit it off your foot and you and you go down and you're grimacing in pain. And you got hurry and get up because <laughs> the pain go away. <laughs> I know people will say I'm crazy, but it's true. <laughs> Pain is irrelevant. You're going to have to stay in there and hit the ball. Wind, wind blowing out now. Another foul off to the left side. It's, isn't it weird the way the wind has circled and blown? <laughs> you know, it, you know. I mean, I, I tell you, it, it started out in right field. Now right. looks like it's blowing towards left. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A little weird. Yeah, yeah the wind swirling for sure, Charles Bishop. And but we've seen some homers here. You, you know, you wonder. Fans love home runs, and we saw we saw our share yesterday, and we're seeing it already in game game one, day two. Yeah, fans dig the long ball, and especially in this urban jet stream, we're getting some homers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a foul off to the left side. What did you say? Uh, we're above sea level, Coach? Yeah. We are above sea level. Atlanta is. And that's a contributing factor in, in, in the balls going out today? Well, the wind is the factor, but you could see how the ball does carry better than that when we play it, you know. There's a fastball just missed. Yeah, you know, we are. Uh, You're in a situation here for Goudeau, trying to get on base for the first time. He's 0 for 3. Represents the tying run. Ground ball to third, could be two. Throws to second over the first. Save, 5-4, field well, they choice. got down the line pretty good. Goudeau came up a little injured on that play, uh, Charles. Yeah, I see that. Let's see what we got. Yeah, he is shaking up. Mike Robbs talked about the fact that he's Ooh. lost a catcher or two. Ooh. We're looking at the replay. Well, there is a review underway. He's safe. So they're going to take a look at it here. Let's, let's look at it as you look at it and as the umpires are seeing it as well. Roger Kador down the line, good hustle. Oh, boy, that's a good angle. Ooh, good angle. Oh, he's out. Right there, that's the shot. 
what he's, he may be out. Right there, uh, previous frame. This is. A little bit better angle here. Ruling on the field is that he's safe, so there has to be this something is. there to overturn this call. He's safe. See, the first baseman's foot can't exactly see. That yeah. might not be the right angle. He's safe. <laughs> that might be the angle there. Maybe a little bit better. Yeah. The ball ain't in there yet. A Again, there has to be some evidence there to overturn the call on the field, which is safe. So there has to be something there. Bang, bang, play, and this is huge. Well, there's an angle there. I don't know if that's the angle. Again, you've got to see something to overturn the call. So if you don't see much there, you have to stick with the call on the field. So they're taking a good look at this in this close game. I mean, every base runner matters at this point. The ruling on the field is that he's safe. And I think he's safe. Yeah, that one right there might be just enough to say he's safe. The field angle right down at first base line, the previous shot might tell it. Yeah. So unless there's something there. Well, the producers say he's safe. All right, here comes the ump. There see? it is. Yep. Oh, the producer's right again. Yeah. <laughs> I think that one angle from left center yeah. confirmed it. You know, Charles, as we're looking at that replay, it looks like uh, Michael Godot has gone out of the game. They're going to get a pinch runner, and that's significant because Coach Mike Robinson was telling us before the game that Coach that Godot is the one true catcher on the roster. Whoa. Yes. And actually, we've got a pinch hitter here, Ron Brown. He pulled a hamstring or something. I've seen him stretching his leg, so that tells me he's tight in the hamstring. Oh, so Texas Southern, they lost their backup catcher early in the season. And Goudeau does all their catching and now he's gimpy. Strike call to Brown. Well, he's got the big bat representing the tying run. One out, one on here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, slaps it foul off to the right side. Well, we've seen the ball carry out of here a couple of times. Ron Brown, 208 during the season. He does have four home runs. 12 runs batted in. Ooh. Mr. Brown, call, third strike. That's really right on the corner. Let's take a look at it. Right down the corner. Catch your flashing outside corner. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hey, you can't take that pitch. You're down two runs. You got a man on the pond. Duck on the pond. Pitch took a steal. Top of the lineup for Texas Southern. I guess if there's one consolation regardless you're going to have your big bats coming up before this is all said and done you're at the top of the lineup now Olivo will probably get another at bat we know what he can do Vasquez had the three run home run so if you're Mike Robb Roger Cato you want to get something right here but, but you're going to have the heart of your lineup coming up before this is over yeah well that's the key you want to get a one, one last crack at it there's a fly ball in the right center field ball ball's is well good. hit Carrying right to almost to the warning track. It's caught and right by Weiss. Side is retired. This Texas Southern team beat Prairie View five out of seven during the regular season. Does it matter right now? Panthers with a lead, eight to six. As we go to the top of the ninth inning. Two, three, and four coming up. Trevino, 
Burroughs Martinez do up after this here on the SWAC Digital Network. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your Buick parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. They're here. I hit the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Michael Burroughs will lead it off here in the ninth inning. Burroughs 0 for 3 with a walk. There's the pitch strike called. We're underway. And off Castillo, fourth Texas Southern pitcher. He's trying to keep the Panthers where it is. This pitch strike called. Down is 0-2. This has been a seesaw game. A couple of home runs hit. Texas Southern was down 7-2. Three-run home run by Vasquez made it 7-6. But a home run by Jonas made it 8-6. And that's where we are. 8-6. Here's the pitch. Ground ball. Foul. Ooh, watch out, B. White. Third base coach. <laughs> a hot shot. Insurance don't cover that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian White is one of the favorite coaches in the league. He's loved by everyone. Uh, just, just a little too, too hot to handle. There's a check swing. A lot of coaches... Wouldn't even deal with that. They'll try to skip all the way. I wouldn't. <laughs> uh. Two and two the count. And this pitch behind him. You know, I remember Coach Kador, and you see this with different teams. Some some managers are coaching at third, others from the dugout. Well, what you you for a lo forever were at third base. I wanted to make a difference. You know, let's face it, people weren't going to do what I was willing to do. I was willing to, on every pitch, tell a kid what to do. You got me? Yeah. People just don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, so I, and I understood that. You know. Girls leading off with a walk. And I understood the value, and I understood my people. In the big league, they tell them when they're on base. What's going on? You got me? Yeah. And why would you not do it in college? And in the big leagues, they're telling them. It could be a two here. Yeah. Six, four, low. Oh, no. Gets filed, Levo. Runner to second. 
Let's look at this, Coach Kador. The operation. He had more time than he thought. Throws to second. Right. Good Bad there. Throw, but and a one hop uh, yeah. off of Olivo's glove. So runner at first, run at second actually. One out. They needed that double play. Yep. This guy could could inflict harm on him right here. There's one out in the inning. Runner at second. There's a swing and a miss here. By Jonas. Jonas, huh? Jonas with the big home run. Didn't hit one at all during the season. He's been on base three times. Homered, walked in singles, well as stole the base. Let's pitch up and in. Texas Southern right now just down a couple of runs. And they all have the heart of their lineup coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Eighth meeting between these two teams. Seven times in the regular season. Texas Southern won five out of seven. Antoine Riggins, a long heart to heart with his team about quality at bats. And Charles Bishop, they have responded here. Opportunistic, eight runs, eight hits. I tell you what, it has been a tremendous uh, batting display today for Prairie View in terms of uh, doing exactly what Coach Antoine Riggins was asking for them to do in the batting cage. Yeah, he was very Roger Cador. He was, I mean, you would think for an elimination game, he was just kind of be in his own space, but he was throwing BP in the in, in the indoor cage before the game, really watching everybody that he pitched to in the cage, making sure the technique and the operation was sound, and his team has soundly responded. Yeah. Two on. And they needed it too. There come Mike Robinson again. He's go maybe not going to the pit. Well, there's nobody throwing in the bullpen. And well, maybe there was and they're warmed up and ready. So we've got the fifth pitcher coming up for Texas Southern. Just trying to keep Prairie View right where they are, which is a two-run Panther lead. We'll give you the fifth TSU pitcher coming up after this timeout on the SWAC Digital Network. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. We welcome you back to Atlanta, the fifth Texas Southern pitcher, all hands on deck. 
Mike Robb told us that before the game. The lefty Justin Valdez, eight appearances during the season. No record, 12 innings pitched. Sebastian Correa, fifth at bat, been on base twice, hit once, walked once, struck out, grounded to second. Trying to keep the Panthers right where they are. Two on, one out. The guy who pitched 12 innings all year, maybe not the guy that's going to take you to the promised land. There's a reason you only pitched him 12 innings all year, in my opinion. Would you agree? Well, I mean, it's maybe a fresher arm, a different look. Yeah, you want to look at him, there's no doubt. Fifth pitcher for Texas Southern, just trying to find a way to stick around. Double steal on, and there's a foul. I like the aggressiveness by Coach White. He kept, he's keeping it on, and that's what you want to do when you got a, a, a team struggling. You want to apply the pressure. Yeah, make the defense, make plays, and it's been a, it's been a struggle. Charles Bishop, two errors either way, and that's been a factor in this game as well. You know, we've talked about, and Roger Cator talked about it being clean in day one, but four errors in this game. Yeah. Well, I'm you're going to see a little more. Go ahead, Charles. No, I'm sure, uh, you know, with the elimination game, nerves are up and things of that nature, but uh, significant with this runner out here on second, uh, that error charge to defensive replacement, Jeffrey Mercado. There you go. Yeah, the change at second. Here's a chopper. Now this you make could it two. be two. You they did the run. Oh, they missed the runner. And they missed the runner at second and got the runner at first. So four to three. Let's take a look at this, Coach Kador. Yeah. He overran. He just, you see, he should have stopped. He kept going forward. Oh, that's close at first. Yeah. He had him where he wanted him. If he stayed, you know, when you grab the ball, you stay in the middle. Stay where you say, okay, hold on. We'll see here. Let me try to explain. If we could go back to um, uh, Chris, I mean James, I'm calling him. Well, I wonder, I wonder <laughs> is he arguing? What's Mike Robb My, arguing? Did he get out of, go out of the baseline? See, right here. Okay, let's watch it. He didn't go out of the baseline. See, when he catch the ball, stop right there. He kept going to the grass. Then he's out of the door. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, no, you got to stop and force the runner. Catch the ball and stop, force the runner to make adjustments. See, right here, st catch it and stop. But he kept going. You see, and the runner just du duked him or deked him. I'm, I'm curious as to what the conversation is about with uh, Mike Robb and the umpire. I'm uh, wasting time. <laughs> the best thing I can say. The, the, there was no out of the runner did not run out of the runner was not out of bounds okay that's what you're asking Charles I mean the only other thing I could see him challenging is the play at first and obviously they, they there's call no, him out yeah but I think that may be the only thing that I'm assuming here that he's arguing well not arguing having a conversation about here See that the runner is in well within bound. Okay, yeah, but yeah, he's he's actually circling like right. the path of the runner. So I think that was his argument. Maybe it ran outside the baseline. He did not. He would have to do a lot of running outside. The, the second baseman made the boo boo, and that's why we had that uh that conversation. Well, the conversation is over. There's two out in the inning. Runner at second. Panthers trying to add to their lead. Texas Southern trying to keep this a two-run game. And, you know, I'm surprised of some of the things I've seen because Coach Robertson is the one coach I know have worked on all of the, the scenarios, you know. That's what he does. You got me? I think with the season on the line, everything is looked at with a fine lens as far as he's concerned. There's a long fly ball in a deep left that field one won't stay down in the line, here. and it is wow. foul. Lucky. Just foul. Boy, he got a lot of that one, Roger Kador. Yeah. Castro. 
take another look at it. If he hit his eye, you talk about going to be a happy mother. <laughs> it's mom. Whoa, he got to drop the head on it. Castro's been on base three times. A bunt single, well, two singles and a walk. Just foul. Ooh, down just barely. Yeah. Two out. Runners on at second and third. Pitch just missed. Count is two and one. Two out. Brave, you trying to go up one or two runs. Texas Southern wants to take this into the ninth, bottom of the ninth with a two-run deficit. There's a runner trying to score on the swing and a miss, and he will. The catcher is not in there. Gordon is not in there. Yes, sir. You are exactly right, Roger Kador. When you have backups, and this is why the game has become what it's become, because you, you don't now, now you don't have your regular people in there. Yeah, Charles Bishop, they were telling, you know, Mike Rob was telling us, Gudo is our catcher. And when he went out, maybe he could have made that play. Yeah, that is a significant substitution there uh, with Godot going out with the injury. Uh, he mentioned it to us. Uh, basically, uh, you have converted outfielders uh, who are playing out, uh, catcher now. Well, that's what happened to Jackson State, in my opinion, last night. They lost because they had a catcher that really wasn't the quality that Omar is accustomed to. He had a lot of difficult balls that – got by him, you know what I'm saying? They check at first on the check swing, did not go around. And this is the bottom of the lineup. And now you can see what is happening. You got people who haven't played much, playing in it, it's, the game is not becoming what it was. It slowed the game down. You <laughs> Forcing Mike Robinson to keep going out there. You know, and that's this is what happens when you go that far into with kids that hadn't been playing much. Well, Mike Robb is about to bring in his sixth pitcher of this game. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. Panthers have added a run. They lead nine to six. We'll be back after this from Atlanta on the SWAC Digital Network. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. You're looking at Zergen Switzer. Switzer, the junior from the Netherlands. Trying to get this third out. 
Switzer, who replaced Valdez, who replaced Castillo, who replaced Malone, who replaced Barnes, who replaced the starter, Kate Fotno. Ball one. Panthers with a run in this inning. Make it nine to six. With runners on at first and third. Switzer brings it home. There's a long fly ball in the deep left field. This ball is well hit, but it's going to be caught in left. Little win there. Caught in left, and the side is retired. And it all comes down to this, the bottom of the ninth inning. Texas Southern needs three to send it in the extra innings. Four to win it. Panthers three outs away from eliminating Texas Southern. This Prairie View team lost five out of seven to Texas Southern during the regular season. We'll see what the bottom of the ninth brings after this timeout here on the SWAC Digital Network. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your view parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. They're here. I hit the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. We're approaching a three-hour ball game here. Way too long. Chase Cromer will lead it off. And we talked about it, Roger Cador. The big bats for Texas Southern will be seen here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Cromer's one of them. He was hit by a pitch, reached on an air, an infield single, and has walked. Pitch strike called, one and one. Now, you got to throw a fastball, make him swing the bat here. You got three runs to work with, so you got some room for, you know, you don't want to screw around with your second best pitch and get behind. Tyrone Ty Tubb trying to finish it up here. Two and one the count. Bottom nine. Count is two and two. Cromer, Olivo, and Vasquez. Olivo, the big home run guy. Vasquez has homered today, a three run shot to make it seven to six. It's nine to six right now. Oh, really? oh, the first, an easy play at first. This is why you got to throw strikes. Martinez. Force him to swing the bats. One away. Alexander Olivo. One out, base is empty. Pitch to Olivo. Strike call. Again, this Prairie View team lost five out of seven to Texas Southern during the regular season. This pitch just misses. The last two games were 2 nothing and 4-2. But here, a high-scoring game in which the Panthers made some adjustments. We'll talk about that. The Panthers win this game. Olivo foul Ooh. off to the right side. Big sexy. The guys had you thrown off a little. If Prairie View does hang on and win. They eliminate Texas Southern. And they'll be right back here at 9 o'clock against the loser of FAMU Bama State. Two out. Run the ladder. And they'll bring up Gabe Vasquez, who's homered in the sack fly. Look at this, Coach Kador. Oh, he had one pitch. He had a pitch to hit. Yeah, but he climbed the ladder on him. As the pitch to Vasquez misses, this Panther team coming into this game. Panthers are 19 and 36 on the year. It's the pitch strike call. 
And for some people, you know, there's some people that believe that the conference tournament should shrink a little bit from four teams in each division to three. But these type of things that you're seeing right now is the reason why I think the format will probably stay the same because you have situations like this. The Panthers struggled. One and two the count. It'll stay that way because the president wanted this way, so it won't be shrinking. Here's the pitch high. So, so trying to finish it up. So the president, yeah. won't, you know, they want that kid, that student athletes to have that experience. Here's the two-two. That will do it. The Panthers have eliminated Texas Southern. Braveview wins nine to six. They eliminate Texas Southern, and the Panthers will take on the loser of FAMU and Bama State tomorrow at nine o'clock. We were gonna hear from Marshall Jonas and Antoine Riggins here on the post game. And Roger Cador, what a game this was. Two rivals, back and forth game. Texas Southern found a way to hang around, but Prairie used the long ball, and look they at, found a way. Look at the line score. Prairie View, nine hits, nine run, two error. Texas Southern, six run, six hit, two error. So the line scores worked out. If you were playing the slot machine, I guess it would work really good, huh? Yeah, absolutely. But no, this was a good victory for, for uh, Prairie View after the coach had a very long, lengthy meeting with his team yesterday, it paid dividend. Quality at bats, started fast, and got it done. And he, and he worked this morning with them in the cage, and it paid dividend. He took them to the cage and worked on certain things, and they, and they got it done. Well, one of the big bats Marshall Jonas on base four times, a homer, a single, and two walks. He's standing by with Charles Bishop. Well, I'll tell you what, Marshall, you picked a, a great time of the year to get your first home run. Yes, sir. Um, man, just it's a good thing um, coming out here and helping my team win. I mean, I haven't played a lot this season, but I come out here in this opportunity. I get the opportunity. I pull through. I just want to thank God and thank everybody, family, my teammates. I just want to win it for them. I'm just playing for them at this point. What sort of pitch did you see to knock that over the left field fence? Uh, it was a slider, curve off speed. I was sitting fastball and it just hung in there and I, I caught it and it just doing what I do best. Good job, buddy. Go celebrate with your teammates. Well, all right, boy. Just it just shows you in the postseason, <laughs> you, you never know what's in. You never know what's going to happen. He didn't hit one home run during the season and he comes up big uh -huh. in the big moments. Oh, uh, yeah. As Prairie View, a team, they played seven times during the year. They played early in a uh, early season tournament in, in Houston, yeah. I believe, at Minute Maid Park, and Texas yeah. Southern won that game. So they played seven times, one more than the traditional six. And Texas Southern, despite winning five out of seven, the Panthers eliminate Texas Southern. I wonder if the emotions of Coach Riggins playing is – Team that he played for Texas Southern, a really, and you talked about him, a really good baseball player. You remember him, coach, quite well, Roger Kador. Yeah, uh, was a really good player, and I'm sure that it might have been some emotions. And speaking of emotions, what are those emotions like, Charles Bishop, as you talk with Antoine Riggins? Coach Riggins, big win, stave off elimination. Uh, you work with these guys in the batting cage. Just, we talked about it during the game. Uh, what was your assessment of the team today? Um. We executed everything we needed to um, uh, on the base. Got timely hitting um, when we need. Um, we allowed them to stay in the game for mistakes in, in, defensively, so we got to clean that up. But I'm, I'm very proud of the kids. To, um, they bounced back from yesterday. Um, we scored some runs. Um, we had some real, real good quality at bats uh, with guys in position. I think we had uh, three guys that had uh, eight to ten pitch at bats. Um, we scored runs on outs, so you know you can't ask for anything um, more from the team when they do that. Coach, elimination game, you only use two pitchers. How big is that moving forward? Uh, that's excellent. Um, it it gives us the opportunity to um, still have guys in the pen, still have um, a couple more starters. Um, it's what you need. You know?
uh, turned. So uh, I'm happy about that. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. Antoine Riggins very subdued but happy, I'm sure. As the Panthers eliminate Texas Southern, Prairie View will take on the loser of FAMU Bama State. That's coming up at three. Coming up next, it will be our second elimination game. Bethune, Cookman, and Jackson State in Eastern Division battle. Coming up next on the SWAC Digital Network. For James Crenshaw, our producer, Roger Kador, the Hall of Famer, Charles Bishop. I'm Charles Edmond. We'll take a break. Coming up in about a half an hour, game two, day two, here from Atlanta on the SWAC Digital Network.